Hey guys, my name is Justin and welcome to Hellsboro, where we care about the design behind designer luxury. And if you do too, make sure to subscribe. Right here, or here. No, I know where it is. Here. Is that it? So for today's video, I have another Battle Royale. Oh, ba, ba. Oh. It's a battle royale. For the uninitiated, a battle royale is basically like a it's like a championship, like tournament style kind of thing, where we pit eight bags up against each other. They go up one on one until we get down to the final two, and then a like best bag is chosen from there. So with the holiday season coming up, I was thinking, what kind of bag would Santa carry, but if he slayed? Like S L A Y, not S L E I G H. Is that right? So if Santa slayed, what kind of bag would he carry? He'd need a huge bag, right? For all the toys for the good children of the world or whatever. So I was like, okay, next theme, extra large bags. So this is what I got for you. So side note, I'm getting over something. So I sound a little weird. That's why. All right. So the bags up today are the Loewe Large Flamenco Clutch, Balenciaga Trash Bag Large Pouch, the Gucci Diana Maxi Tote, the Louis Vuitton Artsy MM, the Prada Large Supernova Handbag, the Bottega Veneta Large Pillow Pouch, the Fendi Sunshine Large, and the Roe Large Glove Bag. All right, let's get started. Round one, match one. Loewe Large Flamenco Clutch versus Balenciaga Trash Bag Large Pouch. So the Loewe Large Flamenco Clutch is basically, it's just kind of like, Wavy? I don't know. It's a drawstring bag and when it's cinched it has this kind of like wave movement to the top of it. But the drawstrings are these like leather ropes that are tied into knots at the end uh, called like flamenco knots is what I call them at least. I don't know if that's like the official thing. They call it a clutch but then of course to have this size bag only be a clutch is a little unwieldy let's say. So they've also added like shoulder straps so you can carry it around. Basically, it's a big tote bag. And then we have the Balenciaga Trash Bag Large Pouch, which is exactly what it sounds like. I think it's a, a coated lambskin, also known as like arena leather is what they call it. They have two versions, black and white. But for me, the one that reads most as trash bag is the white one with like the red drawstring ties that you like pull it to be like, oh, it's a drawstring bag. And then you like tie it kind of to make it look like a trash bag. One of the nice things about this bag is that it has a detachable strap. So if you want to really just give that whole like throw it over your shoulder, like it's an actual trash bag kind of look, you can just you can do that. But then there's also little, uh, little D-rings where you can like add a detachable like shoulder slash, I guess, crossbody strap. Although it's huge. I don't know, I'd do it, whatever. But then basically, it's a it's a gimmick bag. Actually, you know what's interesting? I just <laughs> realized when you put these two bags up against each other, they're kind of somewhat similar. They're both like oversized drawstring bags. One of them is more like a literal interpretation of something, and then the other, the flamenco, is more of just creating this like fluid, like soft form with really like supple leather. If you know me, you know I love these like bags that have like this kind of like bit to them, like the freaking like Balenciaga Ikea bag, like that caused a stir. But then we have this garbage bag, which I mean, there are other brands that have done like a version of a garbage bag. I mean, Moschino has a little trash can bag. Louis Vuitton had the Raindrop Bessais. I still don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. It was a patent leather bag that had the same kind of like drawstring effect. And I think pretty much the same structure where it had the same like D rings where you could put a strap on it. So it's kind of like, this shape isn't super new because it has been done and I think in a more elevated way, less literal. And then for me, I do find a lot of humor still in the oversized, like the large Loewe flamenco clutch because it was originally just a clutch. There comes a point where you have that line of like, there's a certain level of camp that can be appreciated, but then is it just like, okay, you basically are just doing the same thing over and over again. I think we're getting to the point with Balenciaga that it's starting to feel tired. Among other controversies, but I'm not going to get into that because I don't think I have the expertise <laughs> to talk about that kind of thing. But we're just talking about the bags. There's just enough humor while still creating like a very like beautiful product in the Loewe Flamenco Clutch that it's the flamenco that wins. Winner! Loewe Large Flamenco Clutch. 
Round one. Match two. Gucci Diana Maxi Toe versus Louis Vuitton RCM. Fight. Next up, we have the Gucci Diana Maxi Toe. Basically, just a huge version of the Diana, which was the bag that became well known as one of Princess Diana's favorite bags. She loved a good tote to put all of her stuff in, like her checkbook, whatever. I don't know what princesses carry in their bags. <laughs> Do you know those like shopping bag totes that like a lot of brands had that were like white with the brand like just printed on the front with like the black leather rope or string straps or whatever? That's kind of the shape it reminds me of. Of course, if you just have like a large rectangular tote, of course it's gonna look like that. I think one nice thing about this like larger size, because it's so big, instead of just having this huge compartment, you have like a divider in the middle that's a zipped compartment. You have the two compartments on each side and then you have a zipped pocket. So offering a little bit more organization. I mean, it's a, a gigantic bag, so I think that's a good thing. And then against that, we have the Louis Vuitton Artsy MM. So this is basically a large, like floppy, hobo-y shoulder bag, I think is how most people carry it. This kind of bag was like super popular in like the early aughts. Um, maybe into the like mid to late aughts, maybe even the 10s. I definitely still saw people carrying them, and I still see people carrying this bag, even to this day. I don't know why I'm saying to this day, like some historical thing. And honestly, this bag was kind of like one of the reasons behind the theme. Like, I just remember like seeing people carry this bag, and it's this unwieldy, like gigantic floppy thing. And I was like, huh, I wonder like, what the best of those bags would be like. So you know, this is where we are, but I do have to say this is almost feels like a sneak because like, personally I do not like this style of bag because it is just this floppy thing with like a handle. It feels very like west coast, very like hippy dippy kind of style, which I think the right kind of person carrying it, beautiful, but it's definitely not for me. But yeah, it's basically an upmarket hippy bag. Okay, so pitting them up against each other, I think I kind of gave away which one I personally prefer, but let's take a look at them. The Artsy, I know I just said, I just do not get this style of bag. It does not look comfortable to carry. There's pretty much like shoulder, crook of the arm. I would say like if you're carrying it by the hand, it gets so slouchy, I feel like it would almost like drag on the floor. I don't know, maybe I'm just being a snob, but sorry, Gucci Diana Maxi Tote. Winner, Winner. Gucci Diana Maxi Tote. Round, Round one. one, match three. three. Prada, Prada, large, large supernova hand versus Bottega Veneta, large pillow pouch. Fight. Next up, we have the Prada large supernova handbag. I actually think this bag is really interesting. You can tell, like, from the shape of it, it is inspired by, like, the Prada logo, like, turned upside down. So, like, kind of an upside down triangular kind of shape. But then, because the bag cuts off, it reads kind of, like, trapezoidal, which it's not a bad thing. I like that. One thing I do find funny, though, is that there's, like, an excess of zipper. So it kind of, like, flops out on each side. And it kind of reminds me of like a hot dog, where it's like if you pull the zipper out, like the bag ends here and then the, <laughs> the hot dog goes. But I think for me, the closest comparison is actually, I would compare it to another bag that Prada is very well known for, the bowling bag. It, it feels like it has that same kind of like shape and structure, even though, you know, there's a, there's a little bit more interest to it instead of it being like that typical like half circle bowling bag shape. It has a, a little bit more angles, a little bit more edge to it. Up against that, we have the Bottega Veneta large pillow pouch. It's made with a padded leather, so there's a bit of puffiness to it. I've noticed that the leather also has kind of like, almost like a sheen to it. Like it's it's not like the typical grained leather that you see on a lot of bags. And I think that actually makes it really fun because it has the proportions of like a queen pillow, but then so that it doesn't obviously look like you're carrying a pillow, it has a little bit of shine to it, so it, look, it reads as leather. It's kind of like another gimmick bag, but then I think it's a bit more glam. It has a little bit more, like, oomph. Like a little more oomph to it. Okay, so then looking at these two against each other, this is a really tough one because I do appreciate the structure that is put into the Supernova bag by Prada, having a, like, upside-down triangle kind of form but also like reflecting another like well-known bag from Prada, like that bowling bag shape. I think that's super smart. But I think there's also something about Bottega Veneta. It's a big plain rectangle. I think there's something interesting there where it's it's such a stark contrast from a lot of their recent bags where they I feel like they do rely on, not in a bad way, but they rely on that like house code of the Intreccio and Trecciato. That it's, it's really refreshing, especially with how like Matthew Blasey 
has kind of taken Otega Veneta and kind of like turned it. The whole getup of like the denim jacket, denim shirt or whatever, and the jeans that are made out of leather. I think this really fits that kind of like new identity that Matthew Blasey is trying to push Bottega Veneta into. There's another layer of thought within there, connecting to like the whole collection, his premiere collection, that pushes the pillow pouch up. Winner, Bottega Veneta Large Pillow Pouch. Round one, match four, Fendi Sunshine Large. Versus the row, large, large glove bag. Fight. All right, and then the last duo from the first round, we have the Fendi Sunshine Large. There's something about this tote that I find very interesting. On the normal ones, it has like this plexiglass like tortoiseshell handle, a material that at least I associate a lot with like sunglasses or something like that, you know? There is actually a version of it from the Fendi capsule that was done in collab with uh, Marc Jacobs that has clear handles and then there's a little clear vinyl front pocket for you to put your baguette into, which I find hilarious, but we're talking about the normal one right now. It almost feels kind of like a response to the book tote in a way. I know what you're saying, like, Justin, are you not gonna talk about the book tote in this? I think it's more about like finding like different bags, not just the typical ones. Because I also kind of see the book tote as like a travel bag, just because that's when I see the bag the most, when people are traveling. And I was trying to pull into like more, oh, this is like a day-to-day -day bag. For me, the book tote, it doesn't have like any sort of like strap to make it more comfortable. But then one thing about the Fendi Sunshine is that it does. Or should I say it can, because I'm pretty sure it doesn't come with like a crossbody or shoulder strap. You have to like buy it extra. Correct me if I'm wrong, but at least there's the option for that. And for me, that makes it a bit more wearable if you have another way to wear it besides just carrying it by the handle, so like the Dior book tote. And up against that, we have a bag from The Row called the Large Glove Bag. This bag, how do I describe it? It's kind of like this like large muff, the, the things you put your arm in to keep you warm during winter. It's basically a large muff that has a bag attached to it, kind of, but it is like one form. For me, I was like kind of thinking like, do I include this? Because the bag part of it isn't huge, it's the handles that are gigantic, in a way. The handles, where you put your arms. I do find this bag very charming, and I, especially for places that get cold, I think it's actually a great idea for a bag, because, like, you don't want to actually hold your bag with your hand, but, you know, why not do this and then be able to hold your bag, right? I don't know. Sounds fun. I think what I find super interesting about this bag is that it, it almost seems like the bag is the second part. I don't know. Yeah, it's an arm warmer with a big pocket. I think if you know me at all now, I think you can probably guess which one is going to win. But for me, a large tote bag, mm, I do appreciate the details of having the tortoiseshell handle and being able to add a strap for versatility, I think is fantastic. But there's something about this glove bag. Cause then even just looking at the shape of it, how it's like almost like bigger on top than the bottom, I think that's great. I don't think you see that very often when it comes to bags. I love it. it, 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 it glove. Winner. The row. Large, large glove bag. bag. All right, so that was round one. Let's move on to round two. Loewe large, large flamenco clutch. Gucci Diana maxi tote. Bottega Veneta large pillow pouch. The row. Large glove bag. Semi-final. Match one. Loewe Large Flamenco Clutch versus Gucci Diana Maxi Tote. Fight! Alright, so both of these bags are large versions of like house staples. One is the Flamenco and one is the Diana. It's just them kind of like pumped up. Since we have this pairing, I wanted to look at the large versus the small. So if you look at the Flamenco Clutch in just the regular size, it doesn't have the tote straps, but it does have like a crossbody or shoulder strap that you can wear. And then this version, of course, it's huge, but then it has these shoulder straps. Having this giant clutch looking bag, but then being able to wear it as a tote, I don't know, there's something about it that's doing something good to my brain. I can't exactly describe it, but hopefully you understand why. <laughs> and then the Gucci Diana Maxi Tote. For me, the most impactful thing about the bag when you're relating it to like pop culture is the fact that Princess Diana did carry this bag. I like a Princess Diana stand. But she carried the large version, and I think when you go down in size, it still kind of reads as the same, but then when you blow it up, I think that same kind of connotation doesn't exist. So then for me, there's less of that connection to the history of the bag. Design-wise, I think it looks great, but then connecting it to like the culture side of it, I think it kind of misses the mark there. And then of course, if we're just looking at the two shapes in general, one of them, again, is just a big tote. It's a big rectangle. And the other one is this like fluid 
form, shape. It looks more luxurious to carry, I think, because then the leather is going to be softer. The, the Diana, the leather there is very structured and very stiff. With good reason, it's a structured tone. When I tried out the Diana, it's definitely like a less comfortable bag than the flamenco and I think I want to carry a bag that I'm gonna enjoy to have it like in my hand on my arm whatever so I think it really is gonna it's gonna be the Loewe flamenco pouch the big one winner Loewe large flamenco pouch semi-final match two Bottega Veneta large pillow pouch versus the row large glove bag and then we have these two bags where I would say they're both very interesting shapes. One of them I would say is like a standard shape but presented in an interesting way. And then we have the glove bag, which is I think an interesting shape but then presented kind of in a standard way. Uh, there's a few materials for the glove bag. There's a nubuck, leather, and I think there's even a cashmere version, which I think that would be fantastic if you're not allergic to cashmere. When I think of the row, I do think of like interesting shapes but done in an elegant way and I think that's exactly what's done with this glove bag. And the fact that it is presented in these kind of standard materials, I think Nubuck maybe is a little unusual for a bag in a way just because my typical point of reference is like Timberlands. The shape of it almost reads as like object, like something that you would have just because it's that shape but then presented in this very wearable material. I think that's so, so charming. Another thing I was thinking it's actually kind of funny. In a way, these bags are both like kind of like clutches in that there's no handle per se and that the way that you carry the bag is like with like a flat arm. I don't know, I think that's a really interesting connection. Is it going to help me decide? No. But I think I do have a decision. I do appreciate the humor that the Bottega Veneta pillow pouch has, but then the row, this big bag, at least from what I've seen on the market recently, it is unconventional, it is unique, and it is interesting. And I think I definitely have to give it to the row and their glove bag for that. Winner! The row, large glove bag. Alright, that was round two, and we are already in the finals. Woo! Okay, let's do a wave. Woo! Final, final. But with a large flamenco clutch. Versus. The row, large glove bag. All right, so looking at these two bags, okay, I'm gonna be straight with you. When I like get to the final two, I'm like, this is gonna, this be, is gonna easy. be easy. This decision, this decision makes, makes sense. sense. But this one is very challenging for me. If you see it like on social media, people have begun to speak of the row as like, oh, it's a brand that like rich people wear to say like, yeah, I have money. Of course you don't know how much this is because it looks like pretty typical. I would say, you know, the glove bag doesn't look very typical, but the idea that there's no labels, no logos, anything like that. And I would almost say like Loewe, even though they do branding and they have monogram, whatever, I think it does read a little bit less loud as like Louis Vuitton, Gucci, Balenciaga, whatever. I think it's less recognizable even though people do know the brand, especially in Europe, people really are at least aware of the brand. This is hard. I think both of these bags have a certain like fluidity to them. I'm just gonna call it a flamenco toe because it you know, whatever. It has toe straps. The waviness of it, it, it kind of reminds me of like a dumpling or seashells or something like that. And there's this almost like opulence to it. Like when you pull the drawstrings, it reads as like, oh yes, there's an excess fabric because of course we can have excess. And there's some sort of energy to that that I like, maybe I don't relate to, but I really appreciate. And then the glove bag, it doesn't have a sort of like texture pattern from it, but the shape, the silhouette of it, actually it has kind of like a seashell kind of shape in a way too where like it's large comes in and then it goes down the bag the way that you carry them both is also very interesting of course i just talked about the glove bag and how you wear it on your arm as if it's a muff but then with the loewe flamenco tote carrying like a giant tote bag that's not necessarily full of stuff but like it has a lot of stuff in it i think there's a certain comedy to that where like you're a cartoon villain with your like bag of money and you're just like walking away with it. I think that's hilarious. And then I do think that the the tote straps still are a smart way to do it. You just like tuck the straps in if you don't want to use them or you pull them out if you want to rather than like having like detachable straps and having to have hardware on the outside. It reads kind of like as an uninterrupted piece of leather. Looking at the glove bag, the bag I think is maybe a little less versatile. A because you carry it in a specific way. B you probably don't want to carry it in all seasons just because like if it's 
warmer out? Do you want that much leather covering your body? Probably not. And see the pocket, like the compartment, I think the dimensions read as like 10 inches wide, which is not small, but like it's not, I would say, as versatile as like something large like the, the flamenco tote is. Okay. Okay, this is it. Because like of who I am as a person, like I personally would rather buy something that I can wear year round and can actually like do multiple things and offer at least a little versatility. I'm sorry, the row, because I love this bag. I was actually really considering getting this bag before I made another purchase. Watch out for a video. <laughs> I think I have to give it to the Loewe Large Flamenco Clutch. Champion. Loewe Large Flamenco Clutch. Yeah, this was a tough one. I really do love the glove bag. In another world, may, like in another universe, maybe it won. Cause like, I was thinking for me personally, cause it's cold here so much, like I could totally wear a glove bag, like a little thing around my arm to help me stay warm and it would be fine. But I'm just like, it just feels so impractical in a, a certain respect. And I do think that there's just a little bit more humor in the flamenco tote. I, I don't know. I don't know, but let me know. Do you guys agree? Do you think there's another bag that could have won? Do you think I'm crazy? I love hearing from you guys. But that is all I have for you today. If you like this video, make sure to like and subscribe. It lets me know that you like this kind of content and that you too care about the design behind Designer Luxury. Until next time. Big Santa Claus. What kind of bag would Santa care if it would be slay? Like S-L-A-Y? Not S-L-E-I-G-H. Is that right?